Hi everyone, welcome to today's webcast, boosting your R development with Databricks. I'll introduce myself quickly. So I'm Robbie Shaw, I'm a BI analytics consultant, uh, traditionally based out of our London office, but at the minute working from home in Ireland. I'm part of our UK Databricks team, and my contact details are up there should you want to contact me about anything uh, in regards to this webcast, the content of it, or anything in the BI data analytics space as well. I'll be putting them up at the end as well, um, in case you missed them now. So in terms of the agenda for the next half an hour, we'll start off with an overview of Thurgood. For those of you who haven't joined one of these webcasts before, want to understand a little bit more about what Thurgood is. Then we'll talk about the sort of two components that are part of this pairing of R Studio with it, of R with Databricks. So first of all, R and R Studio, and then Databricks, and then we'll get into the real meat of the content in how we can amalgamate the two. So I'll show three different methods. First one being just R in a Databricks notebook. Second one being R Studio desktop running off a Databricks cluster using something called Databricks Connect. And then finally, R Studio server doing something similar to the uh, one to R Studio desktop, but it's integrated with Databricks with the Databricks cluster in a slightly different way. And then finally, I'll just round off with a few sort of action items you can take or you can take with us to help you get started. So I'm sure if you've shown any of our webcasts before, you've probably seen this slide. I'll not labor on it too long, but we're a business intelligence and analytics specialist. We offer the best independent advice because we're independent of the technology vendors. We start with sort of the focus on your business and what are the business questions that you're asking. And then we're looking to the technology and where that can help answer the questions. And then we're sort of enhancing any advice or consulting or development we can help with. We're enhancing that with our analytics knowledge and our sort of data insight knowledge as well. We're a global company. You can see all of our locations there. And we don't just do full design development. We also do a lot of other sort of aspects of BI analytics projects, working, um, working with lots of different companies. So, Though we are independent, we do have strong partnerships with our tech vendors. It helps to stay on the cutting edge of BI and analytics technologies. The one I'll talk to mainly here is obviously Databricks. We have a really strong partnership with them, but we also have partnerships with AWS and we're a Microsoft partner. And you can see there our goal comp competency in cloud platform. So Microsoft's cloud platform is Azure, and Databricks has to run off either AWS or Azure. And being partnered with all three really helps us sort of maintain a sort of good idea of the technology and what's coming next um, with Databricks, but also with AWS, Microsoft, and all of these other partners that we're partner vendors that we're partnered with as well. So R and R Studio first. So what is R? I'm not talking about the number that we're all just trying to keep below one at the minute. I'm actually going to talk about the statistical programming language that's primarily used for statistical operations and graphing data. And it's open source as well. You can really extend its capability by adding in, there's a whole host of possible packages you can add in available to really add more capability to the programming language as it is in its current state. It's a very popular language at the minute. It's eighth in the TOB index. As you can see, it was 20th this time last year. So it's really grown in the past year. And that's not really sort of initial growth, that's a, a resurgence. So traditionally, it was sort of R versus Python, Python in the open source statistical programming languages battle, and Python seemed to be taking over. But there's just such a drive for advanced analytics now and statistical programming that both have just shot up the list. Um, both have shot up the list together. Python is still ahead in the index, but but R is is catching it in terms of uh, ranking at the minute as well. And like I said, R is is free and open source. And it's generally seen as slightly easier to pick up than Python. And then RStudio is sort of the optimized environment for RStudio. It's an integrated development environment. It can come in two forms. There's RStudio Desktop, which is a, a downloaded desktop application. And then there's RStudio Server, which is accessed through the browser. And they're free. the free version of the tools are really good, but also there's the paid version with slightly more capability. And then Databricks. So Databricks was founded by the same team who created Spark. And the way I like to think of Databricks is sort of Spark 
moved into an enterprise platform, a really mature enterprise platform with a really nice user, user experience. It's optimized for use of Spark. It's in the cloud as well, so it's obviously tied in really well with your cloud service providers, so whether that's Azure or it's AWS. And then Databricks describe it themselves as a unified analytics platform. And by that, they mean it's really great for both data engineering and data science. And when I say data science, I sort of mean machine learning, advanced analytics, all of that tied in together. And it's great for both of these, both of these sort of strains of, of data manipulation, if you like. And there's sort of three key points as to why I think it's really great for both of these. The first one is that it's cloud-based, so as I've said before, I think I've mentioned it two or three times by now, it's, it has to be hosted on Azure, so Azure Databricks, or it has to be linked to an AWS account. And therefore, whenever you're using Databricks, you're reaping all those advantages that are well talked through about the advantages of cloud computing, whether that's sort of pain as you consume, always being able to meet your performance levels, being able to spin up resources really quickly, all of that is available and accessible through Databricks. Further to that point, Databricks offers auto-scaling. So whatever you, the first thing you have to do to start working in Databricks is to set up a cluster. And the cluster is made up of one single driver node and then a number of worker nodes. So you can set the minimum number of worker nodes to the maximum number. You can also set the type of spec for each of the VMs you want as well. And basically, Databricks, without any sort of input from you, will be able to auto scale how many of the worker nodes it actually needs to complete the operations that you're trying to do. So it might only need the minimum number of worker nodes for the majority of time that you're working and it'll sort of maintain that cost and make sure you're sort of using as little power as possible. But then anytime you've got a big a big workload coming through, it'll bring in say one, two, three more cost three more nodes to really help you manage the workload so that you aren't really losing out in performance even though your workload's getting bigger. And then finally, you write your code in Databricks in a notebook, which is broken into command cells. And then within each of those command cells, you can actually write in one of these four languages, Python or Scala or SQL. And I think that's a really great tool for flexibility. You can do certain things better in certain languages, and this really gives you the power to be, to be working across multiple languages. It's maybe not one for the purists, but I think it's really, really great. So then specifically why Databricks is good for Data engineering is, again, it's that integration with the cloud environment, so it can slip in so well to your cloud data architecture, particularly working with your, with your data lakes. Um, you can mount the data so easy, you can bring it into Databricks, transform it, light it back out again really easily. Then additionally, uh, Databricks have developed Delta Lake. They've since open sourced it and donated it to the Linux Foundation, but Delta Lake is still really optimized for working within Databricks. I could talk for days on Delta Lake. You've probably heard about um, people building lake houses. That's a lot of, that's, that's been really driven forward by Delta Lake. We do have another webcast on it, which I'll draw your attention to at the end. And then within data science, so as I said, whenever you have to set up a cluster, but you can set up different runtimes on the cluster and you can choose a specific machine learning runtime. And then if you choose that, all of these really optimal machine learning frameworks are installed automatically onto your cluster. And then additionally, Databricks have developed MLflow, which can really help you manage your machine learning lifecycle. R with Databricks, there are two very separate things. Um, R Studio works fine by itself, Databricks works fine by itself. Why do we want to amalgamate them? And it's basically, we want to keep some, some uh, data scientists and data analysts have I'll generated a lot of experience with R, but they want to be able to run the compute part through cloud computing through Databricks and through that distributed processing of, a, of the cluster. And so we want to be able to amalgamate the two together. What are the advantages of that? First of all, it's cost. So cloud computing does have its cost advantages in terms of your pain as you consume. And then Databricks auto scale on top of this where you'll always meet performance as you want, but it'll always scale down to the right level of performance that you need. So you're never overpaying and you're not paying if you're not using it as well. And then additionally, performance, the Databricks cluster is providing that spot distributed cluster computing framework. It's allowing for parallel processing, which is a lot quicker. And it's likely gonna be a lot better than just your local machine or servers. 
And as well, when you set up that cluster, there's a lot of specifications you can add to really set it up for just the type of work that you want to be doing. And then there's additional just flexibility in cloud computing. There's flexibility in working with Databricks, having your cluster on or off, um, the auto scaling, and as well, sort of being able to switch between languages if you choose to work out of Databricks as well. There are naturally going to be some disadvantages. Um, it's not the be all and end all. It's not the perfect solution. So the costs, the costs are variable. Particularly initially, they can be really hard to predict and they can rack up quite fast. But that is all just completely manageable. There's techniques available to manage those costs from, from monitoring auto shutdowns, uh, terminating after a certain amount of times of an a certain length of time of an activity, alerts to emails, all those sorts of things to really help you keep on top of the costs and make sure they don't spiral out of control. You're just paying for what you're actually using. And in terms of performance, obviously the performance is going to be a lot better, but there is a small three to five minute delay in starting the cluster traditionally. So obviously if you're only going to be working on something for three minutes, adding a sort of five minute delay to that isn't going to help. But for most big data workloads, you'll more than make that up very quickly. And then sort of the main disadvantage is that to take advantage of the distributed computing framework, uh, you might need to change some of your code to be working with Spark R or Spark VR. Therefore, code might need converted, and that can be a bit of an issue, a bit of, a bit of an overhead. But at the same time, your regular R functions will still run. So there's the three main methods. I've touched on them earlier. I'll go into slightly more depth here, and then each has their own slide and a small demo. So first of all, we have R in a Databricks notebook. So that's just using R as the main language completely within a Databricks notebook in the Databricks workspace. The second one is the R Studio desktop application. And then you're using Databricks Connect to run the computer through a Databricks cluster. And then finally, it's R Studio server integrated with Databricks. And it's very similar to the R Studio setup where you're working completely out of our studios, out of our studio server online through the browser, but it's linking back and the, the server is actually set up. The cluster is acting as the server essentially. So, R in Databricks notebook. In this case, you're sort of forgetting about our studio all, all together, and you're moving to the Databricks workspace. And so, to work in Databricks, you first of all set up your cluster. So I've set up one there called PGR Studio. And then you set up your notebook, you attach it to that cluster, and then you also select the default language. So I've put, see this small R in blue, in brackets. That means the default language is R. It could also be Scala, um, Python, or SQL. And because it's R, if I just start writing code, it's going to assume that I intend for it to be an R. But if you look down here at command, command 5 at the bottom of the screenshot, you can see I've used that percentage SQL, which is called magic SQL. And that means that I'm saying, in this command cell, take anything that I write as SQL. And you can tell that it's doing that because it's highlighting the, the correct commands you would expect from SQL. So the advantages of using this method is that there's a lot of added Databricks capability you can really take advantage of. So to give an example, they have a really good revision history. You can link through GitHub back to, say, Azure DevOps. So you can really manage continuous integration, continuous development. You can also have concurrent users using the same notebook. You can see what each other's, each other's doing in the notebook. Um, you can see what each other have done using their vision history. So there's a lot of room for collaboration and really good teamwork, which I think in this world of sort of digital transformation and uh, agile methodology, I think ties in really well with that. Then there's the access to other languages. So as I've mentioned, I think two or three, four times now already, you have access to R, but you've, you can access SQL, Python, and Scala so easily as well. And then finally, just having the single workspace for both your notebook, your code, and then also the cluster as well, I think sort of is underrated as having everything just within one window, within one workspace, all set up, all linked up, without having to, to do any sort of configuration around that or switching windows or anything like that. In terms of columns, is that a lot of data scientists, data analysts are not familiar with the Databricks environment, particularly if this whole time that they're working in the R Studio IDE. There may be pushback about having to convert. They may find things sort of 
frustrating at times because they're not able to do them in exactly the same way. So that sort of environment familiarity is really important, I think, um, and it is a consideration you would have to make. Additionally, you can't, because Databricks on the cloud and access to a browser, you can't be working on this offline as well. But I'm really not sure how much of an issue, how much of an issue that is these days. And I'll just switch out to uh, Chrome to give you a demo of that uh, notebook that I was showing. So I've set up my cluster here. It's starting. I can terminate. I can restart it. I can delete it. I can edit any of these options. There's a whole bunch of possibilities you can run into with the cluster. And here is it's the one I screenshotted. I'll just talk through a little bit of the code. I'm not going to run it because live demos can always get a bit um, a bit hectic. But essentially, what I've done is uh, attached the back, attached the package of Spark R, and then in within Databricks itself, I have a table called Diamonds, and then I'm using SQL to select all the rows and all the columns from that Diamonds table, and then I'm writing it to a uh, Spark R data frame. And then I'm just going to look at the top row of that as well with this uh, head command. And then you can see the sort of structure of the data here. Then I'm going to sort of uh, manipulate the data a bit so that I'm getting each color grouped and then its mean and its count value as well. And then also then just view that again with the, with the head value. And then so as part of this, I've, I've got this. But say, for example, this is one of the real advantages of Databricks. Say somehow I don't know how to sort in terms of the count column, so I want to see um, I want to see those exact rows, but I want to see them descending from highest count to lowest count. I don't know how to do it in R, so what I'll do is I'll quickly create or replace a temp view, and I'll therefore use the data frame I've created here, that's DF1, and from it I'll create a table, or rather a view, sorry called view diamonds. And then I'll just change this command cell to SQL with the magic SQL. And then as you can see, I know how to write it, order by count uh, descending. And you can see it's done exactly what I want. It's sort of a silly example because you could find out or you would know quite easily how to sort like that in R. But it does show at a higher level if that capability doesn't exist or if you really don't can't find a way to do it in R. You can always switch to another language, whether it's SQL, Python, or Scala. And you can see that it's using the distributed engine because it's running each of these Spark jobs. You can see coming up here for this for this um, command cell, it didn't run. It did run for this in Spark SQL. Um, but you can still run sort of any regular R command. So um, here's sort of a regular uh, plot of some of that diamond data. You can see that there is no Spark R job there. It took three seconds. But if you're doing something quite maybe slightly more intensive, um, it can be run in Spark R, for example, this generalized linear model, um, summarizing it, creating it, summarizing it, it ran 11 Spark jobs and it ran in about one and a half seconds as well. So I think that's the real use of Databricks is the distributed engine, being able to switch languages, and then there's all the extra features. So like revision history here, you can see me working on it previously, maybe a little bit too late. And my next one then is R Studio Desktop with Databricks Connect. And it's using R Studio Desktop, but you're using something called Databricks Connect to be able to run all those operations through the Databricks cluster and be able to sort of connect your Databricks environment with your R Studio Desktop application. The pros of this are sort of the opposite to what we had before, where People are getting to stay in our studio, something they're familiar with, they know what features, they know how to use it best. That reduces the, the retraining effort. You can work offline to an extent in that you can open our studio and look at um, what you've written, but you can't compute anything, obviously, because it needs to be connected to, to the cloud. And within our studio, then, you can still utilize Spark R and that distributed engine. And then in terms of the cons, you're missing out on the Databricks workspace. I find our studio with Databricks Connect is slightly clunkier than just using Databricks. Um, you're not working out of a single environment, and you're not getting those extra Databricks features as well. And then also another point that sort of in the wider roadmap or strategy of your company is, are you missing this really good chance to, to really evolve 
from like local machine or local servers, developing using using those. So really developing using the cloud and really maximizing that potential of, within the cloud itself. And that sort of switch towards servers in the cloud, it can be a really good turning point, sort of flash point to say, right, from now on, let's move all development. But like I said, it is a reversible decision. You can choose to move that compute power, use Databricks Connect, keep people in our studio, and then eventually sort of phase them in to Databricks Online, or you can never change it all. But I think it is a good chance to really say, really put a marker down and say, this is going to be part of our digital transformation switch to the cloud. And I have a small demo of that as well. This one is live, so has a lot of potential to go wrong. I've opened my uh, RStudio desktop app. And I'm just going to define a couple paths and then start a Spark R session. And you can see there, it started. I think it was already running because it came up quite quick. And it's just warned me that there's a slight mismatch in my Spark versions. So that's not too much of an issue. And I've got a little bit copied here that I'll just paste in. So here I'm going to set up a data frame called Mexico DS, and it's going to read from my Databricks file system, my DBFS, uh, at this location. It's going to read it as a CSV file. It's going to infer some schema, and it's going to assume the header is true. And then just to make sure that data has actually come through. There, you can see it's come through. And then to prove that actually it was in Databricks at one point, I haven't just listed it off. Um, you can see there in DBFS, file store tables, R Shaw, it's in Mexico. There's also this greeting CSV, which I'll refer to in my RStudio server demo as well. The next one is RStudio server integrated with Databricks. And it's a very similar setup to the RStudio desktop that you've seen before. The connection is slightly easier to say slightly, it's significantly easier to set up than the RStudio desktop one. And again, it's it's pretty much the same pros and cons, excluding that sort of offline thing that I don't think is highly relevant. Users are comfortable with it, reduced retraining efforts, still utilizing that um, distributed engine. And you're missing out on the advantages of the Databricks workspace, but you are getting the ones of the R, works, R Studio workspace. And are you missing a significant turning point to 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 really evolve and change and move, move your development to the cloud? So um, just to wrap up, a couple a couple action items you can take and that you can take with us to help you get started. So in terms of R and R Studio, there are open source free tools. You can find them online, start experimenting. Um, there's no real blockers there to helping you get started by yourself. I just know with Databricks, there's a free trial of the tool called Community Databricks. And there you can experiment with notebooks uh, in all, all four of those available languages. Um, do note that the Community Edition has limited compute power. So it, you're not really experiencing the full sort of uh, ferocity of what Databricks can do. Additionally, you're only using driver nodes, so you're not actually going to be um, distributing any of your workload. And then in terms of our Databricks, in terms of the three methods I've just shown, you can experiment with our notebooks in Databricks community. But in terms of the other two, you do need to have a paid Databricks account set up to, to set up that connection. And we can help you set up R and R Studio. We can help you develop an R and R programming language. In terms of Databricks, there's a lot we can offer you. We can help you set up a paid or community Databricks account. We can provide training in both data engineering and data science capability, whether in tandem or separately. And we can do it across Azure or AWS Databricks as well, in addition to showing other cloud capabilities within those platforms as well. In terms of where the tool can advantage you in terms of your, your solutions and your business processes, we can work with you to identify use cases where we think Databricks can really deliver the most value. And then we can deliver initial POCs and what, what we find there. Um, to really prove out uh, that value. And then from that as well, we can then scale them up into, into full development solutions in data engineering or data science or both. And likewise to that, we can help you with Databricks notebooks with R as default language. And we can also help you set up RStudio desktop with Databricks Connect. And we can help you set up with RStudio server integrated with Databricks for your organization. And 
that's the end of the webcast. Just to wrap up, I've alluded to other webcasts we have that offer further information about some of the, the subjects that I really lightly touched on. So we have one on boosting your data, data lake reliability and performance with Delta Lakes. That's a sort of 30 minute deep dive into what Delta Lake can offer. And if you see the one on the right there, we have optimizing cloud costs for data and analytics. And that, that offers sort of a lot of hints about how you can really optimize your costs so that um, they're not spiraling out of control. Plus there's two other webcasts there that I think you may be interested in as well, as well as a whole other plethora of events in thurgood.com slash perspectives. And thanks for joining us today. Do feel free to get in touch at uh, just contact me via either of these methods. And other than that, have a great day. Thank you.